FPS non-lethal weapons don't always mean weapons. Let's take a look at the tractor beam, cutting tool, salvage tool, and medical tool that you'll be using later this year for the new professions coming to Star Citizen. And I've got a quick little important announcement for you at the end of the video, so make sure to stick around. And thank you for coming to my tomato talk. And thanks to my newest Patreon supporters, Matthew Symes and Valiant15. So we've been seeing little hints and sneak peeks at profession-based tools for quite a while now, and these professions have been delayed by years. It is fantastic to finally see that they are happening this year, and the tools they are linked to are looking pretty hot. I am very happy that we're finally getting to see the actual 3D models of these tools, animations and all. Now let me break down for you how it's going to work. You're going to have your multi-tool attachments and you're going to have your actual tools. The multi-tool attachments are more of the attachments to your Swiss Army knife. Very general basic methods of completing the actions in a profession, but not getting too deep into things. This is what normal people will be carrying around with them. But then you have the actual tools. And these are going to be the heavy duty tools that people that specialize in that profession carry around who can do the extra stuff longer faster and more efficiently. Let's take medical as an example. If you are a medic, you'll have a medical tool dedicated to doing the heavy lifting when you're around. That's your focus. That's what always fills your utility slot. That's what people know you for. Everybody else, though, can still carry around a medical tool attachment along with their other attachments in their backpack for those little injuries their squad might incur during difficult times when you're not around. The same goes for the tractor beam attachment, the cutting attachment, or even the salvage attachment. Now let's take a look at what they're showing us with these tools. On the medical side, you'll have the medical attachment, which allows you to see the injuries that players might have, and apply a general healing serum to hold them over until they can get to a more dedicated equipment. This includes long-term injuries that you can incur over weeks or even months of playing the game without taking care of your character's body. And if the game ends up going in the direction that I believe it will go, or the direction I believe they plan that it will go, then this is going to come down to the player's skill. Having the knowledge to know which gel or serum or which ingredient found on a planet you need to use for that specific injury is going to be something that's not told to you. It's something that you learn, you invent, or you discover, whether that be combining two different serums or picking something off of Daymar. And this is going to add to that skill-based system that makes this game fairly easy to pick up, but very difficult to master because of the knowledge you need to know. With the dedicated healing gun, you'll be able to balance the drugs and gels you're using for those specific injuries. That's really the only bit of info we have on the difference between the multi-tool and the gun though. I'm sure there will be more, but this isn't the video for a deep dive. If you're looking for a deep dive, then you can subscribe to the channel down below and stay tuned because I will be doing a pretty deep video on this feature in the next couple of months in the lead up to the profession entering the game later this summer. The medical gun itself is quite nice looking, very sleek and medical-y, though some of those concepts also have more interesting looks to them in my opinion. But they're gonna do what they're gonna do, and honestly, I quite enjoy what we got out of it. The salvage attachment, you'll have the basic functionality to strip away and remove metallic materials and other things from your targeted vehicle giving you the ability to store it and sell it later, or use it in repair situations. That's right, this multi-tool attachment will actually give you the option to repair items as well, acting as a sort of reverse salvage, I guess. And since repair is still a ways off compared to salvage, we don't have as many details about it. But in the same skill-based gameplay thought process, it'll be interesting to see if the material you're repairing an object with will be a consideration. I think it will be, and I think the tool will give you the right info you need depending on what you're looking at in scanning. Then there's the cutter. The oldest multi-tool attachment we have. We know how this guy works. Essentially, you'll be able to cut custom shapes and disconnect pieces from each other that are made from different materials. 
The larger, dedicated, dead space looking cutting tool will provide you with the means to cut a wider range of materials which are much more resistive or thick, while doing it much quicker and for much longer. This tool will be incredibly important for boarding ships, derelicts, and space stations, as well as helping out with the salvaging process and drawing little pretty pictures for other players to come across. My only qualm with this one so far are the crazy wires just hanging around off the gun. Awkward wires. It also seems we're looking at animations for two possible designs here. The tractor beam is an attachment we only just received recently, but it has already proven to be quite useful. The dedicated tractor beam will likely be even more so. Looking quite a bit like the SRV tractor beam, this guy will allow you to carry larger objects for longer and possibly push them further away at higher speeds. This will also be useful for a multitude of professions from salvage to cargo hauling, especially considering these can be used for player movement. I'm really loving the design and feel of these dedicated tools. They're nice and chunky, and like I said earlier, have this kind of dead space feel to them, which is a really good old favorite of mine. The breaching charge is a cool idea, and something that while many people think is a very combat focused item, I think will prove useful for salvagers as well. Not necessarily for the charges they'll need to break the objects open that they're working on, but to blow their way into derelicts, as this charge is confirmed meant to purely work on doors. Once again, this charge is made by a company that exists in the game, which you can work for and build a reputation with but also has its own design language that leaked into the design of this breaching charge. Then there's the Ultiflex crossbow, the first weapon from a new company, a new potential employer. This crossbow is actually a call out to a different game, I got you, if you didn't know. And while I originally theorized that this could be used for things like tracking arrows or EMP arrows, it doesn't seem to be in the cards at the moment hopefully at some distant time after launch. This bow sounds like it'll be used primarily for combat purposes, letting you stay under the radar, literally. This thing doesn't put out IR, EM, or even audible signals, essentially making you invisible to the FBS radar that we'll be getting later this summer. This makes the weapon incredibly useful, and I think it will be very popular. The design of this thing though, bless my tomatoes, holy sh**, this thing is saucy. I love the sleek, admittedly shiny shape of this thing, and while it probably doesn't make sense for 900 years in the future, I just don't care. <laughs> and then there were Asteroids, one of the visual upgrades coming to the game next month. This update is actually a bit more significant than it seems. While the visual update here is important, these Asteroids are constructed in a new way, using a different tool and practices with new shaders from the Organics team. These new asteroids now have more detailed surfaces, much higher diversity in size and shape, and a more realistic appearance. The creation of these assets also allowed the studio to develop a new workflow to design and produce asteroids in different ways for different areas, such as the spiky subset of asteroids that will be present in the new Pyro system next year. Unfortunately though, it sounds like these will only be featured at Lagrange points for now, and not asteroid belts like around Yella, as I thought. And while there may not be any caves in them yet, it is of note that they will be large enough for you to hide in the little nooks and crannies to get out of sight of other players. I mean, the size of the ship that's flying through this crack, even though this is still just by a space station, shows just how massive some of these asteroids and hidden spaces they create will be. And while we didn't get much information about these asteroids, actually only a couple of minutes, we will be seeing them in game within just a couple of weeks. I'm really hoping that mineable asteroids as well as asteroids in the belts can get updated to this new style so that everything is kind of looking up to date. <laughs> Trying to replicate that Anvil Arrow commercial here, but without that cinematic trailer physics system. So that's this week's update, and it's the second to last update this season before the new patch goes live. Now, I did a little poll with you guys this last week asking you what you thought of these weekly reviews, and while a lot of the votes told me that I should keep doing them, a lot of the comments and the attention that these videos get told me otherwise. 
So I'm looking at this. How about we start to move away from news a little bit and more towards things with entertainment value for you guys. No specifics yet, but I have a couple things in the works for you guys. These weekly reviews may go in lieu of bi-weekly reviews or even just keeping with the monthly recaps. But expect to start seeing more gameplay videos, machinima style videos, deep dives, and cinematics. Much like the one I released earlier this week, which you can catch up in the corner or down in the video description. I just said no details, huh? You can always join me as well to become part of these videos in my gaming Discord server down in the video description. And if you'd like to see how my videos are filmed, I do a lot of shooting over on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. So head on over there, say hi, win a ship, and hang out with some other space nerds. Until then, I'd like to thank you for being around, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks to my top supporters, Valiant15, TK, The Alpaca, The Huntress, Ben N, Dasek, Holston Coop, Guilty Conscious, Falcus Vipus, Extreme Tuber 7, and Matthew Symes.